Hi guys, we're back with sessions 42 and today the topic of discussion is really just the same clinical scenarios and review. We're going to work on part 3 today which is going to be the final part. It's going to be about called about EKG interpretation, cardiac assessment, patient education, atrial fibrillation and there's also a case study on that topic. Let's start with the EKG. What exactly is an EKG? We know it is called an electrocardiogram and its purpose is it gives, uh, tells you about the electrical conduction of the heart. When it's done you can tell if a patient has had a myocardial infarction and there are other things that you can note about it too. Sessions 16 is called EKG interpretation. For people who are not familiar with EKG reading, I suggest you watch it. Vid watch the video, it will be very helpful. I'm just going to do a quick run through about what exactly we're talking about. The EKG, when you look at an EKG, first of all, you have to remember the heart has an electrical conduction system. Think of when you turn a light on and off, same sort of thing as what the SA node or sinoatria node does in the heart. It's like turning on that light bulb and turning it off. And of course the heart pumps blood, so when the light bulb is turned on, which is the SA node, something happens. That electrical conduction causes blood to be pumped into the, from the atria to the ventricle and you can take the time to go to session 16 and it will give you very clear directions about what it, everything means. Now there is chest pain assessment. When a patient has chest pain no one is certain that it is definitively a heart attack but one thing we're sure of chest pain should not be ignored. It's important to know that the patient having chest pain might be having a heart attack. So what you should do is take the trouble to find out, discuss the pain, what does it feel like on the level scale of assessing pain, is it on a 1 to 10, how much would you rate it? Ask the patient questions that would be relevant that would help them because we are not certain exactly what is causing the chest pain and it cannot be ignored. Then let's take the patient who has been established to have a cardiac event and is on oxygen. Did, are you aware that oxygen in the presence of uh, a cigarette smoking may lead to something more explosive? So if you have a patient who's got oxygen running, it's imperative that you let them know cigarette smoking is not advised because some people will try. And there's Mrs. Mr. Ross. He was diagnosed with a myocardial infarction. He had an angioplasty done, very successful, but no one's ever told him that uh, it's not okay for his wife to bring him a pot of coffee. So she brings in a pot of coffee and starts giving him what he's not supposed to have. How can you keep an accurate record of eyes and nose when you have people bringing fluids from outside? Be aware that patient education is very important in situations like this. Now is Mr. Henry is very scared. He woke up with pain in the chest, flip-flopping. He feels like his heart is flip-flopping, jumping up and down. Mentions it to the nurse, and what does she say? I will let your doctor know. Not good enough. We just discussed assessment of chest pain. If you should have a patient having any kind of chest discomfort, it's imperative that you address the problem by doing an assessment. Also, for more helpful information on chest pain assessment, Please go to DearNurses.com and enjoy reading Chest Pain Assess series, Master Your Clinical Skills. Also, if you want to know more about EKG reading, you may just want to look also at .com, what is wrong with this EKG. I hope you've enjoyed just these clinical situations and review. Have a nice week.